Welcome. We're glad you could join us as we explore the Callaway Golf Company and their manufacturing inventory by Samantha Berenter, Brian Hine, Nathan Johnson, Kristen Jung, and Blake Nolan. What is inventory? The types of costs expected to be in raw material inventory are costs of materials such as wood, iron, and plastic that have yet to be placed into production. It can also be rubber, leathers, cording material, and graphite and steel shafts. The costs expected to be in the work in process inventory are the costs of materials placed in production plus labor and allocated overhead utilized so far. Those could be the shafts, the club heads. The costs expected to be in the finished goods inventory are the materials, labors, and allocated overhead incurred in making the finished products on hand. Those are the woods and irons themselves, wedges, putters, and the golf balls. Within inventory, there are products and items that may become obsolete and unmarketable. For companies to account for this loss, they have created a reserve for obsolete inventory account. This account will show on the balance sheet and is calculated as you can see by the beginning balance, addition of the provision, and subtracted from the write-off, disposals, and others to be totaled for the ending obsolete inventory. We will go further into the actual journal entries of these accounts later. The provision for the obsolete inventory is based upon the historical and future usage trends of the products. Some other factors that may influence the provision is the exiting of product line, technological change, or new product development. Because this amount is an estimate, the write-off portion is the amount subtracted it from the reserve for obsolete inventory account, as you can see with the ending balance of 20129 once we have the ending balance, we can then calculate the portion of the obsolete within the finished goods. So once we have already calculated the reserve, we then need to calculate the gross finished good inventory, which is the net inventory from the balance sheet plus the amount of obsolete. In this case, you can see the calculations for 2007 and 2006, which totals the gross finished goods for 2007 to be 273,130, and in 2006 to be 282, 425. Once we have these amounts, we can then calculate the percentage of the reserve obsolete within the finished goods, which to be totals to be for 2007, 7.37%, and in 2006 to be 6.13%. Based on these percentages, it seems Callaway is slowly increasing the amount of obsolete inventory relative to the gross finished goods. This is something Callaway may want to look further to into to improve the efficiency of the inventory. Now that we have gone over the activity in the obsolete inventory reserve account, I will be walking us through the journal entries that are happening simultaneously as Callaway makes their provisions adjustments throughout the period. The first journal entry, as you can see on the slide, is when we initially made an estimate to add to the contra asset account the provision for obsolete inventory. When we make this estimate, we want to increase the provision account, which has a normal credit balance. The balancing debit will be charged to our expense account cost of sales. We will debit these accounts for the full $12,182.
This slide shows the activity in each of Callaway's related T accounts for cost of sales and the provision for obsolete inventory. In our initial journal entry, we debited cost of sales for the amount of 12182 You can see that on the left part of our slide in the cost of sales T account is being debited. The next part of this transaction was a credit to obsolete inventory for $12,182. This can be seen on the right, par right hand part of our slide. The next journal entry occurs when Callaway actually writes off their inventory. As was previously noted, this happens when Callaway sees their assets va value decrease. The first part of our journal entry will be a debit to the previously mentioned provision for obsolete inventory account. We debit this account for $9,368. There also needs to be a corresponding credit. so. Callaway will credit their inventory account, decreasing this asset account by $9,368 as well. This slide shows the activity in each of the related T accounts for our second journal entry. As you can see, there is a $12,182 credit in our obsolete inventory account. This, occur this is there because in our past account, we credited obsolete inventory for the estimate amount. This new amount of 9,368 represents our debit of our second journal entry in order to write off the obsolete inventory and write our inventory down. As you can see, the $9,368 credit to inventory is our corresponding move that decreases the overall inventory account. Hello, now that we have made our journal entries, it is now time to walk through the activity and all of, our, all of the accounts in question. And in accounting, we use T accounts in order to help see our data and help, er, and help go through the accounts from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. So initially, we're going to start with the one value that we could find in the company's financial statements, and that is the cost of sales. As you can see, there's already a $12,182 in this account. This is when we expensed, in our earlier journal entry, we expensed cost of sales for $12,182 in our provision estimate. So now I'm going to raise this. I just wanted to make sure that everyone realized that that is incorporated in our yearly total, which when we look at Callaway's, when we look at Callaway's income statement, their total for the year is $631,368. So I'm going to go ahead and write that here. Also, I should point out, as you can see, this cost of sales T account has a beginning balance of zero. That's because it is an expense account and it gets dumped out at the end of every period. So this balances, and when we look on the debit side, it balances 631, 368, 631, 368. So now that we have our cost of sales account, we can transfer this value into our inventory account. So now that we go to look at our inventory account, we can find the beginning balance of 265110 and the ending balance of $253,001 in the company's financial statements. As you can see here, there is a 9,368 write-off, and this is another, from one, another one of our journal entries that we made earlier. When we wrote off accounts, remember, we debited the provision and then we credited the inventory to actually mark it down. So this is going to be on the credit side, taking away from our inventory account. Next, we can put the cost of sales, which will also get credited every time we make sales. So I'm going to put that value up right now.
So, as you can tell, this is the same exact number that we got in the last account. It's just getting transferred over to this inventory account. Now that we have these numbers, we, are, we can now solve for this right here, which is going to end up being our cost of finished goods sold. So now I'm going to go over to this board and show how to get this amount. So. So we're going to start with our ending balance, and then we're going to add in the cost of sales amount that we, that we found in the income statement. Then we're going to add the write-off, and then we finally subtract the beginning balance to come to, our, come to our final amount in cost of finished goods sold. I will now write that. So now when we get out our calculators and punch through these numbers, we come up with $628,627. We can now put this on the debit side. If we go back to the other T account, we can put this on the debit side as an increase in inventory because our we're working backwards and this is our finished goods that increased our inventory. <laughs> now that we have this value, we know that we're receiving finished goods in the form into our inventory account. So we know that our finished goods account, the amount that's being sent to inventory, will originally be a credit on the finished goods account. So we can transfer this value down onto the credit side, decreasing our finished goods account because they are now leaving the finished goods account and going into the inventory account. So now we're going to do the same kind of reverse engineering that we did on the last account. We need to find a debit balance here that will make our ending balance match up. So once again, we'll go over to the sideboard and we will solve. Solve for the goods completed from work in process account. Once again, we start with our ending balance. Then we add our two credit sides, decreasing the account back to the account, back to the ending balance. Then of course we subtract 
the beginning balance. And once we do the calculation on this, we end up with 642,523. So now we can put this on the debit side of our finished goods. This number represents the amount of work in process inventory that was finished in the year. I would also like to at this time address this 20,129 of obsolete inventory. In the case, we are told that obsolete inventory account is, is included in our finished goods balance. So if we don't take out this 20,129, it will therefore overstate our cost of finished goods sold. So now we're going to continue on and reverse engineer. The cost of finished goods sold is going to be a credit of the work in process inventory. The logic behind this is that the work in process inventory is finished and then credited because it has a debit balance, so it's credited to the finished, it's credited and then sent to the finished goods. Sorry about my penmanship. Now that we have this, I'd like to address this 150,000 that was here. This 150,000 was also given to, given to us in the case. Our inventory, when we are a manufacturing company, will contain three things. It will contain direct materials, or other, otherwise known as raw materials. It will include direct labor which is our salaries of all our manufacturing personnel and it will include overhead which is everything else. Since we were giving this $150,000 in the case we have already included it in the debit process because it is increasing the value of our working process inventory. So with that being said we can also reverse engineer once again to find the goods completed, or, or sorry, I'm sorry, to find the raw materials that were sent to the work and process inventory in the period. So I'll go over here, I'm going to erase these two. In order to solve, we once again are going to start with our ending balance. We're going to add our goods completed. And subtract our debit balances, which were $150,000 for the manufacturing salaries, and our beginning balance. When we do these calculations, we come up with 490,260 goods sent to work in process. So we can now put this in our work in process inventory account.
Once again, we're going to re-engineer and go forward back. We are now trying to find trying to find the purchases that the company made. So we're going to take this value. Since it decreases our raw materials account, it is credited. And in order to solve, once again, we'll go over to this board. We're going to start with our ending balance once again. We're going to subtract the credit that we just put into the account of goods sent to work in process. of 490,260. Then we are going to subtract our beginning balance. After we calculate, we'll come up with 486,647 purchases of raw materials. We now go back to our T-account and enter our purchases. Now that we have found our purchases for our raw materials, we want to know how much of our accounts payable. So in order to get our payments, which is going to be a debit on accounts payable, we're going to want to show the purchases traveling to the credit side of the accounts payable T account. Now that we have our all of our step all of our separate activities, we can solve for the payments. And go back over here and solve for the payments. So for the payments, it's going to be a little different because all of our accounts are on the debit side. So we're still, we're going to actually start with our beginning balance. And we're going to add our purchases in. Then we're going to subtract our ending balance. And when we calculate this out, we find our payments. This 494,575 represents our payments which is also another way of saying our decrease in accounts receivable because we were paying off our debts. So if we take this back over to the accounts payable, we can finish our T accounts. So now through all of this reverse engineering, we were able to start at our cost of sales and go in a big circle and reverse engineer our way. And do, by doing this, we see all of the activity in the accounts. So we see all the activity at Callaway throughout the fiscal year 2007.
In terms of application and assumptions for Callaway's inventory ratios, they can be evaluated by the turnover ratio and the holding period's operating cycle and efficiency. The turnover ratio is used to evaluate how many times a company's inventory is sold and replaced over a period. The days in the period can then be divided by the inventory turnover formula to calculate the days it takes to sell inventory on hand, which defines inventory turnover days. The turnover ratio is calculated by cost of sales divided by average inventories net. Cost of sales or cost of goods sold can be obtained from Callaway's income statement. Average inventory is calculated as the sum of the beginning inventory plus the ending inventory divided by two. The values of beginning and end ending inventory are obtained from the balance sheet at the, end, at the start and the end of the accounting period. Looking at the cost of sales divided by average inventories net, which is the inventory turnover ratio for 2007 and 2006, we can compare these numbers using the ratios. The 2007 numbers for cost of sales is 631,368. The average inventory net is 253,001 plus 265,110 divided by 2, which equals 259,055.5. The inventory turnover ratio equals 2.437. The inventory holding period Another ratio used to track the operating cycle and its efficiency is used to calculate the expected period, period of time during which inventory takes to be sold to an investor. In other words, it refers to the time between an asset's purchase and its sale. The inventory holding period is calculated by 365 days divided by the inventory turnover ratio thus measuring the number of days that the inventory takes to sell divided by the inventory turnover ratio previously calculated. On average in 2007 it took 149.77 days for Callaway to manufacture and sell its inventory. Comparing these numbers to Callaway's inventory turnover ratio in 2006, the cost of sales in 2006 was 619832. The average inventory's net was 253343.5 and the inventory turnover ratio was 2.447. On average in 2006 it took 149.16 days for Callaway to manufacture and sell its inventory. These are essentially the holding periods for 2007 and 2006. The inventory efficiency comparison for 2007 and 2006 is a percentage change of only 0.409%. As a result, Callaway's inventory turnover has a very slight decrease from 2006 to 2007. A lower turnover ratio is usually a bad sign, stating that the company may not be producing and selling its goods or services quickly. Products in inventory tend to deteriorate or lose value as they sit in a warehouse. A higher turnover ratio is a sign that the company has efficient productivity and is producing and selling its goods or services more quickly. Companies selling perishable items have a very high turnover and average inventory accounts for any seasonally effects on the ratio. Hence, a comparison would only be fair if made between businesses of the same industry selling similar products and therefore, considering the inventory of Callaway, it makes sense to compare products within the sport industry. Black Diamond is a sporting manufacturer of climbing, ski, mountain, and wheel performance products. The types of products offered include rock climbing equipment such as carabiners, harnesses, and helmets as well as day packs, skis and poles, tents, headlamps, and various apparel for outdoor activities. They break their inventories down into raw materials and supplies, work in process, and finished goods. Therefore, the types of items seen in raw materials could be steel, plastic, cotton, and clasps. The costs associated include shipping costs of the supplies as well as the cost of the materials. The types of items seen in work in process inventory would include helmets without straps, 
backpacks that aren't finished, and headlamps without the light bulbs. Types of costs in this category will also include labor of employees. Unlike Callaway, Black Diamond does not have a reserve for obsolete inventory. The inventory listed on their balance sheet is not net balance. Instead, Black Diamond performs reviews for excess, closeout, or slow-moving items to make provisions to reflect inventory value. This provision can be seen on the company's statement of cash flows in the account called Changes in Operating Assets and Liabilities, and more specifically, the subcategory for inventory. This provision will ultimately lower the net cash used by operating activities. In order to compare the inventory efficiency of the two companies, we will look at Black Diamond's inventory turnover ratio for 2012 and 2011 and the inventory holding periods. To determine the inventory turnover ratio for 2012, we take the cost of sales from the income statement for 2012 of 108613 and divide this by the average inventory from 2011 and 2012, the 53,900.5. This yields a ratio of 2.02, which means that for every dollar invested in inventory, Black Diamond is generating $2.02 in sales. When 365 is divided by this ratio, we get inventory holding period of 180.69 days. This is the time the company takes to go from manufacturing inventory to making a sale from 2012. From 2011 to 2012, Black Diamond experienced a 7.9% increase in holding period. This will increase their operating cycle and as can be seen by their lower inventory turnover ratio, less efficient. Comparing Callaway in 2007 to Black Diamond in 2012, Callaway has an inventory turnover ratio that is 20.6% higher than Black Diamond's. This means Callaway is more efficient in converting their inventory to sales than Black Diamond. Looking at the difference between the company's inventory holding periods, Callaway is 17.1% lower than Black Diamond. They manufacture and sell their inventory 30.92 days faster than Black Diamond does. By having a lower holding period, Callaway is able to minimize their operating cycle, which is an indicator of management efficiency. Thank you for exploring the Callaway Golf Company and their manufacturing inventory with us. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at any time.